Is Lord of the Rings Rise to War free to play friendly? Or on the other hand, is it completely pay to win? Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiscoal Gaming, and in today's video, I'm talking about what a free-to-play player can get done in the Lord of the Rings Rise to War game. Now, I've talked in a number of videos about how I've only spent $3 so far on this particular account, and if I'm going to play the game in the long run, I almost certainly will do a non-trivial amount of spending, but what can you get done with only 3 bucks spent in the game? My resource production is insane, my ring power per hour is pretty insane, and what matters is not the absolute values, but if you look at the personal production rank here, I'm currently fourth for personal production, and by the way, that's with a bunch of forts placed all around the map. I could crank that number up higher, I suppose, if I really was trying to push this number right over here, which is personal production. So, yes. You can get a lot of work done in Lord of the Rings Rise to War with a free-to-play or nearly free-to-play account. Again, I spent three bucks, one dollar, I think, on Aragorn and two dollars on like ten of those medals that give you a bunch of, you know, loot drops. It's it's the gotcha bit of the game. It's It's how you get crazy commanders and equipment. And that, by the way, is the big difference maker between a pay-to-win player and a free-to-play player. And what's so unusual about this game, in my opinion, is that you can do an unbelievable amount of work free to play because so much of what you need to do in this game is take territories and taking territories takes time. Yes, having better commanders, yes, equipment will go a long way, but you can still be absolutely freaking savage and get a lot of territory, a lot of territory which generates a lot of resources and makes you very effective in this game. The area in which you really fall down is going to be commanders and equipment. So I'll show you a little bit of what I've got on my $3 spent here. And I'm about three weeks into the game, right? So time spent also means that you go a lot further. But let's just talk about these commanders. I've got a Loyalty 5 Dwalin, which is a Tier 1 starting commander. I've got a Tier 2 commander, Gimli, up to rank 3. I've got Aragorn, Tier 2 Commander, at Loyalty 2. But then the rest of my commanders here are really basic. Faramir's Loyalty 3, Baramir's Loyalty 1, Merry and Pippin, Loyalty 2, Haldir at 1, and Hurgorn at 0. So my commanders are not all that advanced, and I do not have very many options for weapons. I do not have very many options for armor, helmets, or accessories. It's pretty freaking limited over here, and spending would get you a lot. What would spending get you? A way better selection of commanders that you could be using. It would get you way better equipment and more loyalty, which, by the way, in case you didn't know, <clears throat> you also can, of course, use items that you have that you've been getting free to play and do tavern tips to boost the loyalty of commanders that are available to you. But this number in the bottom left is your influence number, and that goes up based on your grand total of commander influence. This gives you some buffs, and they're non-trivial. At my current level, which is the barely spent anything mode, I've got 4.5% commander speed, focus, and might, and I am very close to getting even more might boost. So having a really deep roster of commanders is really valuable, even if you aren't actively using them and they just sit there, because it improves your influence level, which gives you passive buffs as well, which is kind of nuts. So... I would, as a free-to-play player, strongly recommend that you do these tavern tips and that you refresh them and you do the refresh tips. I have been spending about 600 gems a day doing that, and it's felt pretty fruitful as an activity overall. Now, maybe the better place to have been spending my gems would have been on some of these medals for the 50% off gem, uh, you know, cost of a rare treasure here over here. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose on this. Uh, I feel like the commander experience was pretty valuable, but it's worth pointing out that over time, a pay-to-win player is going to get a lot of advantage. And why is that? Because at the end of a season, okay, at the end of a season, there's only so many things that you take with you, and it's basically your commanders and your equipment. Your tiles all get reset. A whole, I mean, pretty much everything gets reset. Even your commander levels will get reset, okay? So... It is important to keep in mind that 
as a free-to-play player, I feel like that use of gems that I was doing to boost my commanders was really important. Because if I'm not doing that, over time you will fall so far behind on commanders that I imagine it's going to be really tough to keep up. So I can still out-muscle, or now at least outnumber players that are not able to play as much. And this game, I have to say, I have spent more time playing this than I feel like most games that I play over... Like, if we look at all the time I spent on Rise of Kingdoms and all the time I spent on Infinite Galaxy, I'm probably spending more time playing this game because there's so much you need to do and there's so much value you miss if you're not actively playing. And that is kind of a weird aspect of this game, man. Like, you don't actually have to play. Like, if, if things are idle, it's not actually that big a deal. You're not actually, like... It's not that bad, but also, like, man, it just feels like you're losing out on so much value if you aren't doing all the things that you're doing. You know what I mean? So if you aren't running out and spending down your uh, stamina on all your commanders, like Dwalin's at max stamina now, you're missing out on value, man. You're missing out on value. So this game, in that regard, has been really weird. It's had me on almost, like, high alert 24-7 for three weeks, which has been really fun. But I wonder if it's always this way. Like, is this a game you can play casually? Or if you're playing it casually, do you kind of get wrecked? Do you take a season off to, like, chill? Or for the entirety of the time that you're playing this game, like, are you going, are you going all in? I don't know. Those are things that I worry about, but are also opportunities for free-to-play players. If you're free-to-play and you spend your stamina, then you will get a huge advantage. If you're free to play and you capture loads of tiles, you will get a massive snowball advantage that puts you ahead on your buildings without having to spend. It puts you ahead on so much stuff. It's honestly fairly astonishing how well I'm doing on $3. Now, I've done a little bit of fighting. I certainly could stand to do more. I've got 142,000 prestige. Presumably that number is going to go up. And um, yeah, I'll be kind of eager for your thoughts. Is this a free-to-play friendly game? I'm going to vote yes. Are the pay-to-win elements there? abso freaking lootly man. That's how the game's funded. That's kind of the business model. I really like that in this game, there, it's honestly very refreshing how little pressure there is to spend in the game. That aspect is really quite remarkable. There is very, very little in the way of pop-ups and alerts and things that are telling you there's value in deals to go and spend lots of money in this game. And in that regard, the temptation level is perhaps a little bit lower than in other games to like, buy now for value, right? Um, but I really feel like a free-to-play player can do well, and possibly the best thing you can do is just to be in the right group of players who are playing as actively as you are. If you found this video helpful, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. In summary, the free-to-play advantage is super real if you spend time. Time over spend goes a long way. But when you go head-to-head -head against some of these folks that have done a lot of spending, yes, their armies are going to be very difficult to take down. Yes, they're going to be able to take out higher-level tiles than you can sooner because they've spent so much. But if a pay-to-win player is not active, they're not going to be winning. It's that simple. <laughs> because to some extent, you just have to be hyperactive building up your resource production, and until you've done that, it sort of doesn't matter how much you spent on commanders. If you have a bunch of level one commanders with great equipment, that's cool, but you're still going to lose to somebody who has put in the freaking time. Until next time, everybody, you have fun smashing your enemies and leave a comment with your thoughts.